Uh, so hello everyone and welcome to our webinar on Blue Team Fundamentals course launch webinar. I'm Nandini Paradwaj, uh, the Operating Officer at Cyber Warfare Labs and I'm really excited to have you all here with us today. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, uh, so before starting, uh, let me give a brief about our company, Cyber Warfare Labs. So Cyber Warfare Labs is a UK based ad tech company. The company is committed to addressing cyber security challenges with a real time hands on solution. Our vir virtual platform allow users to refine their skills to plug and play practical labs and a diverse range of certification courses. So the company has mainly two divisions. The first is Cyber Range Lab. So this division focuses mainly on providing practical and real-time solutions to cybersecurity challenges. It offers a virtual platform uh, where a user can engage in hands-on trainings through practical labs that are ready to use. And the second one is upskilling platform. So Cyber Warfare Labs offer a wide range of on-demand courses designed for individual to all skills level and uh, our instructor-led training services are available to educational institute, government agencies and corporate organizations. So uh, if you have any requirement, you can drop a mail to uh, support at the rate cyberwarfare.life. Okay, we'll move to next slide. Okay, so before we dive into the topic, uh, let's introduce our speakers of today webinar, that is Hari Suthan. Yes. So Hari Sutan is a senior security engineer at Cyber Warfare Labs, where his passion for cyber security shines through his work. With a strong interest in the realm of cyber defense, Hari is on mission to bluster digital security and safeguard against the ever evolving landscape of cyber threats. He is set to lead a webinar on the premium edition uh, launch of the Blue Team Fundamental course. So uh, that's all about the speaker. And from here, dear participants, uh, we will be providing you the attendance certificate within the 14, eight hour, 48 hours, along with the video recording for the same. And uh, this PPT as well. And as promised, 10 lucky winners will get a chance to win the access of Blue Team Fundamental course that will announce shortly after the webinar. So that's it. Uh, so here, thank you. I guess uh, you will be enjoying the webinar. And so here, without further ado, I would like Hari to take over. So uh, let's get started. Thank you. Okay. Hope my screen is visible. Uh, yes, Hari, your screen thanks. is visible. Okay. Cool. So thanks for the introduction, Nandini. So let's quickly jump into our webinar. So this particular webinar has been designed uh, mainly focused on elaborating how the cyber defense has been working and what are all the key components which has been associated with the cyber defense. And we will be classifying various spaces, how the cyber defense has been involved in their investigation and other and further analysis. So we have classified in such a way and we will be demonstrating how a chain incident is being investigated in a real case scenario. Yeah, cool. So let me recollect the stuff which I actually mentioned previously. So the ultimate goal of this particular webinar is to get to know about the basic introduction about cyber defense and its various key components. And we will be detailedly discussing about the various phases of cyber defense, which include identification, investigation and incident handling, how a particular incident is being handled across the IT enterprise. And we will be jumping into our practical demonstration of chain incident investigation, where we have picked the real use case scenario uh, which is being targeted by many attackers and uh, we will be launching our blue team fundamental course uh, we will be detailedly discussing about it later when when you're going in that slides yeah introduction to cyber defense as everyone knows this particular cyber defense has been um, becoming more important in many it and non-it industries so why because the attack the attacks across the various it and non it is been constantly um, 
constantly increasing many has been targeting many vulnerabilities and many misconfiguration which has been configured within the enterprise and this particular misconfiguration can lead the attacker to get compromised their host machine or the entire infrastructure this particular damages has been um, making the organization to more suffer like if a particular enterprise has been get compromised they will be they will be facing many financial loss and many many other problems to maintain their business integrity so to prevent that particular activity we need the it and non it companies has been started establishing various cyber defense team to protect this particular kind of cyber attacks as i mentioned this particular cyber defense is a strategy and a practice of protecting it infrastructure from malicious intrusion generally malicious intrusion can be a web based attacks network host or it can be anything it even it can be a phishing attack so any attack or any activity which is been causing or damaging this particular it infrastructure is been considered as a malicious and this particular cyber defense is been encompasses with various practices technology and processes which has been specifically designed to safeguard the digital assets so the ultimate goal of this particular cyber defense is to protect the digital assets which is been present in our internal organization so we need to protect uh, we need to prevent from various attacks so we need to implement various defensive controls we need to establish various access control and lot more stuff to protect our internal information to get access by the unauthorized users so this is the general overview so let us have a question how it will how it is been functioning so we will be discussing how a cyber defense has been functions functioning across the it enterprise and what are all the teams which has been involved specifically in the cyber defense concept and what is their methodology so uh, for this particular cyber defense generally follow two two particular approach proactive and reactive approach so as i mentioned these particular categorization you might observe multiple teams like security operation risk assessment threat intel dfir threat and team malware analysis so based on their approaches so we have classified in they, they have been classified into two section proactive and reactive cyber defense proactive is nothing but like uh, handling an attack or managing or de defending the attack which is been without like uh, in the initial stage itself so to be more more give a summary like uh, to detect or prevent a cyber attack which is not get not not yet executed so this particular approach has been followed by the security operation team risk assessment and threat intel often this particular teams has been follow the proactive approach which which technically monitor the it enterprise and if some attack is been happening they will be proactively responding to this particular cyber attacks by their investigate investigative skills this particular reactive cyber defense need a very huge high 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 setup skill set so this particular reactive team operates when an enterprise or a when a host machine is get compromised so this reactive approach is been handle or process when a host machine or a enterprise is get compromised and the defensive team need to be handle that particular infected host machine or enterprise to to prevent from the further attacks or need to investigate to gather multiple information so these are all the major classification of proactive and reactive approach why this classification is required like as i mentioned the attack growth has been too high so as a cyber defender cyber defenders we need to act more brilliant or more intelligent than the attacker to specifically tackle that particular attack which has been executing by the attackers so that's why it's been classified into the proactive and reactive approach so we will be discussing how this particular teams has been involved in handling and various incidents so before jumping into the classification so these are all the major component components of the defensive um, the cyber defense so generally cyber defense is often involved in the process of people process and technology so these three com these three combination will actually result us with a better cyber defense so people saw nothing but the employees who's been involved in the defensive operation is been represent as the employees so the peoples can be a security analyst security engineer security researcher or CISO so 
who are all been specifically recu recruited for particularly handling the cyber incident has been uh, falls under the people component and the process so process has been a uh, approach which we which we have been following to tackle that particular incident so if in case of like let us assume if in case of phishing activity so the organization will will follow a particular process or an approach to investigate and determine this particular activity with the help of people so this particular components will be working um, together to handle or tackle the particular cyber incident so in the as i mentioned in the process stage we have, we will be like uh, mentioning what what are all the steps what are all the process to particularly tackle any cyber incident and the technology so technology is nothing but like the tools which has been useful for our in, in investigation and analysis so we will be like as a cyber defender we will be constantly engaging working with multiple tools like sim edr xdr threat intel tools like misp and uh, some threat hunting tools like velociraptor deep blue cli there are a lot more tools like the cyber defense has been majority of the cyber defense is solely rely on the tools and technology so these three major components will be working together to effectively protect or defend against various cyber threats so that's what the particular this particular people process technology is been representing and the various phases of cyber defense so these are all the like based on the working in the it and non it enterprise uh, we have been classified this particular scenario into three different phases first would be the identification phase second would be the investigation and analysis and the post incident investigation so these three phases will be um, working together to identify a cyber, identify a cyber attack and analyze this particular reported incident and proactively responding to this particular cyber incident so based on their working activity it's been get classified yeah so we have given a very detailed illustration how this particular identification phase has been working yeah so let us assume this particular phase is an generally enterprise network is nothing but the internal network so which generally encompasses with various host machine servers like network devices there are a lot more systems which is been integrated in the enterprise network even the cloud technology like will also been falls under what are all the private on the component which has been included in this particular enterprise network so it's been which we will be constantly monitoring using various tools like uh, sim edr so the first and foremost phase of the cyber defense is to identify the suspicious attack so we, so the phase i as i mentioned first we will be identifying the suspicious incident and we will be investigating this particular reported incident and determining determine whether this particular reported incident is a malicious or not or it going to impact the organization or not so based on that we will be responding to this particular incident so it is been more important uh, for the cyber defender to implement a very strong identification phase to achieve identification we will be using various tools like sim edr and xdr so the so their ultimate work is to collect logs even from multiple devices and servers and storage unit in a very centralized way so there are uh, we will be deploying the agents like the software which which will be used to collect logs and even from various endpoints and we will be storing in a centralized unit for further analysis and the second most important point in the identification base phase is the rules often security engineers or the researcher will be constantly working on creating various detection rules detection rules are nothing but the uh, a rule which used for correlating the collected logs and event with the attack pattern so as you know like uh, as we already know there are multiple attacks like uh, if, if we take the web there would be sql injection cross site scripting csrf there are a lot more classification of attack same with the network so if it is a network we will be exper experiencing dos ddos and some brute forcing activity there are a lot more uh, attacks on each category of web network host and even on ad 
so based on the attack the researcher will be specifically working on creating a deduction rule so this particular deduction rule will correlate with the collected logs so if the rule if the collected logs matches the particular rule which has been created then this particular um, this particular event will be get alerted in a in an incident management tool so every cyber event or a cyber incident begins their journey with the incident management so incident management is nothing but like it's a centralized management tool or a application which generally manage the alert which is been triggered by the rules or the security solution and it will be get converted into a ticket so often many beginners might hear this particular terms like ticket it's nothing but the reported alert or a single suspicious event is being considered as a ticket in the incident management tool so with the help of risk assessment team this particular incident is being categorized as a low medium high or a critical so this is the overview like uh, as i mentioned first we will be collecting log from our enterprise network and a dedicated security research team will be creating various rules based on their business operation like if it is a financial technology they will be constantly creating rule to monitor and identify financial technology based attacks and when this particular collected log get uh, match with the rule then this particular uh, event will be generated considered as an alert then this particular alert will be uh, transformed into a single incident or a ticket and ticket will be assigned with the severity based on their impact based on the calculation which is done by the risk assessment team the particular ticket will be get assigned with the severity it can be either low medium high or a critical so later uh, the second phase is the investigation phase so this particular phase we will be experiencing the people and technology so people are nothing but it can be a security analyst or it can it, it, this particular investigation phase is mostly done by the security security operation center analyst so based on the categorization low medium high and critical the security analyst will be working 24 hours a day to investigate the reported incident so this incident can be investigated with the process which is being predefined in the organization so every team will follow a pro every, every team has a defined way of investigation set like uh, to reduce the workload like for example like if the organize if we are experiencing a login brute force activity then the organization will follow a structured way to investigate that particular activity so this the role of the security operation analyst is to investigate the reported incident with their process so if we are taking let us in our case we will be taking the some web-based attack so if it is a web-based attack the analyst will first examine the status code so the reported incident will get a will have a very a detailed information which url is being targeted and uh, by our investigation we will be determining whether it is it is a impactable event or or even we can find the ip or the activity or the artifact which is associated with this particular attack so in such case we will the analyst will constantly engage in examining the status code of the particular reported url or examine the uri like what are all the is the attacker is trying to access some other sorry if the reported incident has reported ip of the incident is been trying to access any other url and determining the ip which is associated associated with this particular request and investigating the user agent and further it will be correlated with other monitoring tools too so these are all the process so based on the alert this particular process will get varies so this particular op this this particular process is been achieved with the help of various security tools like uh, it can be both public and uh, internal tools so internal tools like sim edr again the sim sim has been sim edr can also used for log collection and investigative purposes so this particular in incident will be get investigated in our sim edrs or network monitoring or xdr based on their nature for example if it is a network based attacks we will be majorly using our network monitoring tool if it is a web or Post base uh, if it is a web targeted attack mostly it will be get uh, 
investigated with the SIEM if it is a host based like a malware or virus or a trojan is been targeting on the host machine mostly we will be using some ER or XDR solution so based on the attack nature we will be constantly so it's not a limited one we, we might also using multiple tools simultaneously to investigate this particular attack so and the so this is how the uh, traditional security operation work so based on the alerted incident they will be using this particular tools and technology to investigate so to to confirm this particular activity they will be get help with the threat intel team for example while i'm just in well while the security operation team has been investigating a web based attack where they are been experiencing a sql injection attack so the analyst has successfully find the pattern so further he he can easily find the ip which is associated with the web request so while getting the ip the analyst will not only limited to checking this particular uh, tools he or, he or she will be constantly engaged in validating the particular um, identify ip so either they can use to verify in their internal thread intel feed or they can use the external thread intel feed like virus total cisco taros or many other tools is been available on online for particular validation so this is how the security operation and thread intel will be constantly working on the investigation phase investigation phase so while concluding that uh, in this particular case we are assuming this web attack has been investigated by the security analyst and they have been determined this some particular uh, ip is being uh, targeting the web, web server of the internal network then this then the the another important role of the security operation analyst is to document their finding so they will be updating their finding in their incident management portal so in our demonstration we will be seeing how the incident management portal looks and how the particular investigation will be working so it's just a overview so while jumping to our demonstration you will have a very clear picture what i actually mentioned in, in this particular phase so based on their finding so this particular the, the incident is being categorized either a true positive or a false positive so as a there is another so that's why like the cyber defender always have a very huge responsibility so based on their investigation he or she will be constantly engaged in various uh, activity on investigation phase and their ultimate goal is to determine the nature of the particular reported incident so incident can be either a true positive incident or a false positive incident so if it is a true positive incident when true positive incident is been considered when a reported event is been malicious so when the, well, while the investi when in the investigation phase they have been uh, checking they have been using various tools and various other external fields to determine like this is the suspicious activity in such case this particular event is been marked as true positive false positive so it's nothing but like um, every time there is there could be not an attack so even activity will is also get uh, identified by this particular uh, phase so this particular sim edr xdr often identify a legit activity as a suspicious so in such case it can be a false positive the unintended or, or a non malicious event or a legit event which which get uh, triggered by the sorry, security solution is been considered as a false positive so this is been solely responsible for the security operation analyst to determine the true nature of the reported incident if in case you have been falsely marking this particular as a uh, particular vice versely it going to be a huge impact so it is a, it is their huge role to investigate a very investigate in a very detailed way and determine the true nature of this particular activity so on the post investigation phase so um, if first we can talk about the first so if we are experiencing a false positive alert so it is not just to close that particular incident as a false positive it is an uh, it is it need to be fine tuned this particular deduction because like why why because like uh, as i know as i said like the cyber defenders will always get, get a lot of incident and alert simultaneously so it is been responsible to reduce the false positive it is bit hard like in the in case of reality but 
the team need to be dedicatedly working on reducing or fine tuning the particular deduction allowed to reduce the false positive but if in case of true positive event so as i mentioned like this particular in a post compromise scenario Mm, this particular three team, three three teams like incident response digital forensics and threat hunting team will get involved if in case of post compromise. So these are all the reactive. These teams will follow a reactive approach. So they will be engaged if in case of post compromise activity. So the first, if the if the particular activity is being considered as a true positive and it is it is going to be an impactable one, it is being moved to the incident response team. So every cyber defense team will be work as a team. So, if a security operation team is solely responsible for the investigation, and uh, if they determine or identify the particular event as a malicious, so it will get moved to the incident response. So, the in the incident response, they will follow a particular life cycle like uh, preparation, containment, eradication, and recovery, and post incident activity. So, this is a general uh, life cycle which is being followed by the incident response team. But what they specifically do is, if the security operation team has been reporting. The particular incident as a malicious or a true positive, it will get moved to the incident response team. Incident response team first contain the particular incident. Why? Because to not particularly spread on their internal infrastructure. Let us assume if it is a malware execution in the particular host machine, the EDR or the or a XDR solution has been successfully identified a malware execution in one of the particular host machine. Then this particular incident will move to the incident response. Incident response first particularly contain that particular host machine by disconnecting the network and uh, isolating from their internal infrastructure. And they will be doing the eradication phase. Eradication is nothing but like deleting the artifact or as we know the if it is a malware based injection, mal malware based attacks, it will often involve in some file drop activity or some external communication activity. In such case, the incident response will be deleting each and every artifact which is been um, done by the um, malicious malware. So sometimes you might be often hear this terminology name as DFIR, digital forensics and incident response. So in many IT and non many IT organizations, they will be combining this particular two things like the incident response and digital forensics in a uh, single way. Why? Because like if the incident response team is containing the digital forensics team before eradicating, before removing their uh, file drop or the error, uh, or removing their malicious activity, the DFIR team will particular infected host machine to identify the root cause. So that's why this particular we will be constantly hearing the DFIR team, digital forensic and incident response. They will be often working together to achieve the process. So uh, let's continue. The eradication they will be solely focusing on removing the artifact uh, to which has been dropped by the malware. And in the recovery, they will be uh, deep cleaning the entire uh, host machine and they will be get connected to the internal infrastructure and they will be get working on it. So this is the ultimate work of the incident response. So this particular incident response is a bit uh, hot challenge uh, compared to the security operation. Why? Because like if the organization has been experiencing more than five to six compromise, the incident response needs to be act uh, immediately to for the further uh, exploitation. So it has been a, it has been generally represented as a firefighter job. Like uh, they will be cons they they have been they can be ping this particular incident response team at any time or anywhere. So that is how it's been generally working till now. Uh, later, I'm continuing the digital forensics team. Digital forensics team is it's not that much um, uh, firefighting job. Why? Because they will be solely handling the post compromise activity. So the difficulty of this particular DFIR is a bit hard. Like we need to have um, many ideology about the cyber defense and the majority attack. So we need to know what would be the attack, how the attacker will exploit the host machine. So we need to have both offensive and defensive knowledge to particularly get placed in the DFIR team. Uh, sorry, digital forensics team. Why? Because, like as I mentioned, while uh, before eradication of the particular host machine, the DF digital forensics team will take an image of this particular host machine. It's nothing but the actual copy of the entire host machine, and they will be analyzing the particular infected host machine to determine the root cause. What is the root cause for this particular incident? They will be engaging various investigation and 
they will be final uh, in their final investigation they will be came up with a very detailed investigative report this is the particular um, vulnerability or a weakness which the attacker has been exploited and get an initial access to the in the host machine so it will take like uh, as i mentioned after taking the image the system can be restored to re restored by the incident response team but um, they will be working hard to determine the root cause of this so the efi digital forensics team is to solely work on determining the root cause of this particular activity and the threaten so in recently after 2019 this particular threat and has a huge high so why because the attackers are so, so becoming more smarter than this particular detection tool so here we can see in based on the logs and we also, these particular identification phases solely depending on the logs and the security solutions like year and next year so attackers have started creating their payload or started exploiting the host mission uh, in such a way by evading this particular detection. So whenever there is a virus or a malware which has been created by the attacker, they are really smart to bypass this particular EDR and XDR to get an initial access. So to avoid or to detect such particular activity, this particular threat and team has been evolved and deployed in recent times. So there is a huge demand for this particular threat and and it required a whole lot of skill set to get placed in this particular threat and activity. So threat and will generally work on a hypothesis based uh, validation and testing process. So they will be came up with multiple hypotheses like uh, ba based on their business plan. Like uh, as I mentioned, if uh, IT organization is performing some financial sector, so they will be creating multiple hypotheses. Hypothesis are nothing but the uh, cases like which they are going to test whether this particular attack can be expected or not so this is a bit advanced why because they will be taking the activity of a many other apts and many other attacks so they will be creating and replicating this particular attack simultaneously to test whether our host uh, like they will be testing whether is there any attack which is being evaded this is cyber defense and they will be uh, they used to detect such, such uh, ev evasive attack so that is the that is their uh, whole lot of working so these are all the um, teams which has been involved in the post investigation phase there are other teams like malware analysis team which you, which will also included in with the digital forensics and incident response team but this is the overview Mostly these particular teams will be changed based on the organization. Either the SOC team can either handle the incident response process or it will be um, mixed or it will be get changed based on their uh, business policy and their structure. So these are all the three different phases where the cyber defenders will be constantly working. So yeah, so let us discuss about the basic skill, skill set or the uh, essential skill set which the cyber defenders has been required. So the first would be the log monitoring. So, so as I mentioned, every alert and every incident is being solely based on the logs event, which has been accumulating from the host machine. So we need a very huge skill set of monitoring various logs like web, web logs, event logs. So there are the logs has been classified into various formats. So we need to have an ability to differentiate and monitor this part which need to give a priority and how it needs to be monitored so the log monitoring the first ability or first essential skill set for the cyber defender and the correlation so in every case so uh, we will be constantly engaging correlating the particular activity based tool so if it is a let us assume like uh, if it is a like let us again assume the malware attack so malware generally have can perform various attacks so if a malware is trying to communicate to the external network so in such case we need to correlate both the host logs and the network logs so we, we have been constantly engaging in this particular correlation we will be often correlating various logs to determine the incident and the incident management incident management as i mentioned it is the starting point of the incident so we need to know how a particular incident will be managed in a build like um, well structured way and prioritizing the incident so the priority as i mentioned like low medium high and critical so 
So we need to get to work on the high alert in a very short span of time to get to all that particular activity. So the prioritization of the incident is in required skill set for the cyber and in incident investigation. So it is a key part like uh, so to achieve this particular skill set, uh, we need to con we need to um, know how the attack has been working and how the particular log has been associated with the particular attack. So it's a very huge process. So that's why this particular cyber defense is being very uh, like bit hard nowadays. So the cyber defenders is, is uh, required to have both offensive and defensive skill. Why? Because like without that particular knowledge, we doesn't we, we have been lagging how the attack has been happened or in the even at the investigation we have been lagging where to look and whether the identify process is an attack or not. So it is being constantly evolving this particular like. Previously, it is not a culture like the cyber defenders can skip the offensive part, but now this particular culture has been constantly uh, evolving. So, and the observing the findings. So, we need to document the documentation need to be done on each and every team. So, they need to document each and every step on their findings and correlated with various intel fields. This particular skill set is for the thread intel analyst. They will be correlating their findings with various thread intel feeds, forums, social media, whether the particular IP or the activity which has been associated with some adversaries or a APT threat group. Why? Because like if the thread intel can correlate and determine uh, the uh, IP activity which has been associated with the APT group, then the defense can defense team can work hard to implement a um, protection from the particular APT group. So this is how the thread intel work and uh, determine the true nature of the event so as i mentioned we need the security operation analyst need to work to identify whether this particular event has been a true true positive or a false positive and uh, a proper incident response plan so we the incident response team will uh, in the preparation so in the life cycle itself it's been clearly mentioned under the preparation phase for every incident or every active every um, incident uh, the incident response team to have a very proper plan so if somebody if the security operation team has been reporting an incident to an IR they need to follow this particular plan to mitigate that particular alert so they need to come up with a very detailed playbook to handle the particular incident and uh, determining the root cause and enhancing the election rule so these two will be the yeah, for, for M16 where they will be working on identifying and determining the root cause of the particular reported incident and based on their reports the security operation or the direction engineer team can enhance their direction rule to direct that particular activity again and the tools and technology so uh, cyber default they, it is mandatory to work on various tools like SIM, EDRs, XDR the cyber defenders need to have a practical skill set so they are not going to only work on a very one tool, they will be constantly working on various different tools. So this is the general overview, like the theory part is being completed. So it's, uh, so now I hope like you will have a very good understanding what is cyber defense, how it's been working. So let's quickly jump into our demonstration. So in our demonstration, as I mentioned, so we have taken a um, some um, real case scenario or a real targeted attack so while demonstrating like you will get to understand what are all the point i just mentioned in the investigation phase you you, you can visualize this particular stuff so we have been discussing about three incident one with the suspicious network can activity director remote service brute forcing activity director and remote login activity director so as I mentioned before investigating, we need to have a basic idea how this particular incident is rep it's rep what it is representing the attack. So suspicious network scan activity. So first, let me show our incident management portal. So here you can see like um, I have already logged into this particular hive. Hive is nothing but the open source uh, incident management tool. So here we have observed three different incidents. One with the suspicious network scan activity detected, remote service brute force activity detected and remote login activity detected. So first we will be, so why uh, the chain attack is generally 
the series of incident which has been targeting on one particular host here we can see like if you are opening the incident you can see every uh, every reported alert has been targeting this 10 to 10.2.0.3 same goes for the other alerts so it has been targeting 10.2.0.3 and same with the critical like uh, 10.2.0.3 so before investigation let me give a very over, very detailed overview of the incident management work so this is the general illustration of how the incident management works so here you will be get to have various cases of the alerts which has been triggered by the um, security solutions like sim edr or xdr so based on like uh, based on their risk score this particular incident has been categorized as low medium high or critical so this particular net, network scan activity is being categorized as a low and same like it is being uh, this particular remote brute force activity is being categorized as medium and login activity is being categorized as critical so this is how it works so later like while opening the particular incident you came to have the task so if you have any particular task it, uh, we can we, you can actually observe this particular task in the observable section you can add the findings like uh, what type of finding like either like if in case of suspicious network scan we will be finding some ips so we can directly get uh, enter the ip so whether it's a ioc whether it's so we can fill this particular folder so this particular folder gets synced with the editor feed and if another incident which has been reported by this particular IP get easily detected and it will be easy for our investigation too. So that's how this particular uh, observable um, tab works. Cancel it. Yeah. In the TTP section, like um, TTP is a bit uh, uh, advanced concepts or it's a bit hard to understand. So if you are aware about this particular uh, from a attack framework called Mitre. So where we can came to see multiple techniques which has been collected and reported by the MITRE team. So, so if if it is a suspicious network scan activity, I can use so this will be generally falling under the reconnaissance phase, re reconnaissance phase, and we will be using we will be searching for a particular technique like um, what is this particular scan activity false. So here we can see domain property network topology. So it can be gathering victim host vision. So this particular technique is being detected based on our uh, reported incident. And we can also update this particular uh, TTP parts too. And in the attachment. So attachment generally works in the phishing based alerts. So while this phishing, phishing is being reported, uh, this particular ticket as an attachment of the uh, EML file of the uh, reported email then we will be investigating and determine whether this particular reported phishing is the malicious or not so this is these are all the major classification after like a while uh, after you you are performing your investigation you can update this observable on the ttp and you can even attach your report so you can create your uh, over report and you can attach this report and finally you can close this particular case mm -hmm. Yeah, so while closing, as I said, like the classification is majorly on false positive or a true positive. If based on our investigation, it is a false positive, we need to change our status to true positive. And is there an impact like whether this particular event has been involved in any impact? And we need to give a detailed summary why this particular incident has been considered as a true positive. So we need to fill every detail and we can confirm this particular activity. When later this particular incident will get moved to the incident response team. So the incident response team have a very good idea like about the basic investigation which is done by the security operation team. So it will ease their process so they can solely work on their incident response plan. So we can see this in our upcoming step. First we will be working on our suspicious network scan activity detected. So for before that we need to know what is the network scan activity so let us jump into our slide again so this network scan is a very common commonly observed observed being event why because many attackers or or beginners who's getting into a cyber security they have been everyone knows about the network scan 
so nmap scan is uh, is been used to enumerate the um, open ports which is been associated with the targeted host machine so they will be performing this particular network scan to direct, uh, to discover the host machine information and they will be performing port scan to identify some open and code, uh, closed port and they will be used to this particular network scan activity to uh, identify the services which has been associated with the host machine and it is also been used for OS fingerprinting and it also used to check whether is there any firewall or security policy has been um, applied or not. So as we know, uh, so it's totally based on the attack. So they will be uh, scanning the host machine to find their vulnerability or find some open port. And if they found some open port, they will be brute forcing it or explore if, if it has been any vulnerability associated with this particular services, they will be try exploiting to get an initial access, initial foothold with the uh, targeted host machine. So in this case, the alert has been simple, like we are experiencing a network scan activity investigation. So I have created an investigation for the port scan activity. So if like uh, first we need to understand how this particular port scan work. So if the if uh, any users or attacker is been targeting the internal infrastructure or a public facing machine with the nmap scan nmap port scan. So this the traffic will be like uh, the nmap scan will first send a sync request and the particular targeted system will respond with the acknowledgement and reset. So this common this particular network traffic pattern is observed while performing the nmap port scan. So and uh, if you see the sync, sync act and reset. So this particular pattern is observed when a port is being open. For example, in the web, like let us assume the attacker is trying to uh, enumerate or trying to perform a network scan on the web server. So while performing the network scan, um the the attacker first identify like first they will be identifying the ports which is being opened um, publicly accessible by the web server so they will perform the port scan from the nmap so while performing that like first the nmap will start at syncing, uh, sending the sync request and if the port is closed so the web server or the target system will send a acknowledgement and reset packet so this these particular a trap this particular pattern will send to every port like uh, from port 1 to 60,000 plus port it will be constantly sending to a majorly targeted port or every port like uh, we will be observing but if in case in web server the port 80 will be majorly get open so in such case if the port is open the uh, targeted machine or the web server will send a sync acknowledgement and the nmap will send a reset so we will be practically seeing in our network monitoring tool. So for that, uh, let me open. So for the demonstration, I'm just using one of the network monitoring tool called Moloch. So this this uh, explanation is not uh, based on the tools, how we will be using this tools, but on the technique base. So we will be solely working on the technique which has been used to identify it. So as, I, as we understand the pattern of this particular port scan, we will be generate, we will be crafting a query to identify the particular port scan activity. Let me quickly. So here you can see I have custom crafted some uh, queries to uh, determine the activity. So here I have mentioned the destination IP. So which is which we which I have been get from the incident tickets and I have mentioned the protocol at TCP definitely uh, there are uh, other ways of uh, nmap scan to there are UDP scan still scan much more but in our port scan we are simply assuming it might be a port scan and it definitely majoritarily is going to use the TCP. So I'm just prioritizing the TCP event and as I mentioned so I'm just prioritizing the flag like sync and the reset flag so i will let you know but uh, you you might get doubt i have mentioned the acknowledgement and reset why i'm just mentioning the reset flag i will give an explanation where from this result so just uh, i'm just going to randomly search for past six hours so if it is a very huge uh, uh, enterprise so the timestamp should be less like we need to um search this particular event uh, greater like um, we can get uh, 
three or four hours before and after to get search but it is a very small uh, setup so i'm just going for a six hour search so here while searching i can get a uh, particular ip which is trying to communicate to a multiple port in a very short span of time you can see like uh, 1856 54 within a less than a second is trying to access multiple destination port like 995888229362936 there are multiple ports which is been so this is a pattern when it's been observed when an attacker has been trying to perform a network scan in a targeted enterprise so for a better visibility there is an uh, there are advanced uh, cases like we can use this particular filter where we can see what are all the ips and the port which has been accessed by this uh, particular external IP. So in our case, we are considering this particular as a external IP. So here uh, we can see it has been targeting multiple IP simultaneously. So uh, we might be in, uh, in some cases of the network monitoring tool, we can't, uh, we, we might be experiencing various flags like uh, I will show you. Here we are observing like sync and reset flag, but to get a proper uh, it is always recommended to use the wireshark to observe the nature of the event so let me quickly download this particular as a pcap because like the network monitoring tool um, is been like it's need to perform it need to be lively monitor the enterprise and need to capture so there is a huge chance of failing to adding such incident here you can see i'm just exported the same set of information into a shot but here you can see you can observe the reset and acknowledgement flag but here if you are checking it we can't observe the recent acknowledgement flag like it might be a, a fault from this uh, tools or they are they are not being passed correctly so there might be a lot of chance but uh, as I mentioned, so uh, here we can see like in, in a overview itself, we can see particularly this particular, uh, the first the uh, external IP is being uh, sending a sync flag and the uh, host machine is being uh, sending back with the reset and acknowledgement flag, which uh, it has been observed constantly over this particular packet. Uh, packet. Um, so that's how. So there I, I have, uh, I can show you the filter which is used in this particular for the wireshark packet too so in this session uh, like in the documentation i will uh, let uh, let even can paste this particular pcap on the uh, queries to get to have a practice on this on over this so as i mentioned like the uh, we we have been final we have been investigated and determined some suspicious port scan activity based on their pattern on the behavior so uh, the second technique second technique so we need like uh, it is not to just uh, simply close the incident as a true positive we can do a further analysis too like by checking what are all the open port which is discovered by the attacker so let me use another uh, query to particularly get this So this query is particularly filter of the event where the attacker has been successfully enumerated or the open port which is discovered by the attacker so here the query is simple like i'm just specifying the destination ip and the protocol and the sync reset and the acknowledgement so which has been mentioned in the diagram so i'm just replicating the same pattern here you can see like the attacker has here the count is been bit high because what are all the successful enumeration has been displayed here so in such case the attacker the the particular host machine the 10.2.0.3 has been um has a multiple port like 3306 so these are all the port which has been public which has been successfully enumerated by the attacker and it can be further exploited through so we need to document each and every step and we can uh, proceed closing this particular incident like uh, by attaching like in, in our in our finding we observe this particular as an external ip we can simply copy that and we can we can add this as an ip and we can paste it and we can so, so it is a uh, 
so in many cases to determine its severity we use multiple tools like virus total or abuse ipdb there are a lot of available source or we can use the internal credential portal to determine its um, impact so based on that like we can determine whether it's a high or restricted so we can add this particular and tag this uh, scan activity detected and we can confirm it so after confirm this this will be get added in our incident so whenever we are moving it to the further team like the incident response digital forensics it is easy for them to observe the activity and the findings which is done by the security operation team so right now we are performing the operation which is done by the security operation team and um, yeah so this is the traditional way they will be handling the incident simultaneously so as we done the first incident it's uh, it's uh, we have been identify a suspicious network scan so even if it is a another steel scan or the udp scan we need to test so uh, we need to get ready with this particular queries so based on the attacks like based on which the attack is been executing we need to um, predefinedly get ready with this particular query so it will ease our process so i i just need to simply paste the multiple queries and get identify whether this particular attack has been observed or not so yeah so here i hope like you will clearly understand so for the um, practical demonstration too i will be uploading this particular extracted pcap so you can also test using this particular query so yeah later we can investigate the second case remote service brute force activity directed so um, here we can see some a yeah, suspicious remote service brute forcing activity has been directed over the host uh, 10.2.0 so so while investigating that uh, like as i mentioned if it is a network scan we will be so only using the um, network monitoring tool um, but if it is a other activity like the remote brute forcing or other activity we will be also using the network manage, network tool with the other uh, security solution like sim so in this particular investigation we will be using both network monitoring tool and the sim for our investigation so uh, as we know like this particular rdp uh, or the remote brute force activity has been more common so if yeah, because remote remote activity has been essential for our business process too like many organization will need this particular rdp service to perform their daily operation if it is a support team they will get connected with the rdp and resolve this particular issue which is happening over the host machine so we can't avoid this particular remote uh, service but this is a very open gateway for the attacker they will be constantly performing various attacks like the brute force or they will be finding some vulnerable service and get exploit that particular remote service to get a initial access why because they, if they have been successfully exploited the remote desktop they can get a um, gui access of the particular host machine so they will be constantly engaged in the enumeration or the password guessing activity they, they will be try uh, trying with various password combination or the username combination to get successful authentication of the host machine so like uh, as i mentioned before getting into an investigation we need to have a basic idea what are all uh, how the remote uh, remote uh, login activity is been targeted and what are all the brute forcing methodology so when it came to a remote so there are some majorly targeted port like for example 3389 uh, port 22 and 23 so these are all like there are others too but these are all the majorly targeted uh, remote uh, brute forcing port um, so we need to think in, in mindset of the attacker to perform our investigation. So as I have been clearly um, prioritized the major uh, remote desktop protocol, I will just simply search in our network monitoring tool. Is there any suspicious activity has been carried over uh, the enterprise with targeting this particular ports? So let me quickly open. So I will simply perform a it can be 223389 we need we can check individually like uh, is there any suspicious activity which is being carried over the port 
here I can see only one activity it if there might be a possibility it can be done by the nmap scan here we can see sync sync act reset so this is been done by the nmap scan and it is also uh, available this port is also openly available on the host machine here we can see 22 22 is majorly being accessed by the nmap scan again here we can see sync and reset flag and so here are some uh, open ssh connection too so we will be investigating that too and port 23 so yeah like as i mentioned like uh, link like uh, we will be getting the result of the nmap scan while checking this individual services but uh, if you in my guessing like we will be majorly experiencing this particular port here, here i can see there are a lot of uh, activity compared to others so generally if it is a brute force as everybody knows there might be a sudden spike of network traffic or a network activity in a very short span of time so here we can clearly see within a very short span of time we are observing various uh, activity so this might be the particular brute force activity but we are not sure but we will be confirming it soon let me quickly go to the other slides yeah so uh, let me uh, quickly jump into the uh, wireshark why because like uh, this, uh, explaining the wireshark is a bit uh, detailed way like you can see the pattern like uh, because here we can we are simply seeing this ip is communicating and targeting this uh, uh, remote port like if you are even searching this 3389 it's a rdp port like um, you will get information so uh, it is 90 percent confirmed the attacker is trying to explain exploit the port uh, 3389 with the brute force technique but for a better visibility let us export this particular pcap and we can see in a very good uh, very, very detailed way So this is the particular activity which is being uh, observed over like here you you can even see a very detailed uh, information of uh, network activity compared to the moloch why because the network monitoring tool need to work uh, need to collect logs and pass there might not be high visibility in some cases but uh, it is always recommended to use the wireshark for a better visibility and understanding here we can see like um, here I can see a simple block of uh, request and response in a very similar pattern. So if it is a brute force activity, um, there might be a authentication video which might be happening over the attacker and the targeted victim. And if it is get failed, the attacker is going to try a similar pattern with a different password combination. So this is the pattern we already know. Here, while randomly seeing, I can see a huge chunk of uh, data packets with the similar packet here we can see the attacker has been trying to access the particular uh, port with the sync request every uh, actually request will be start with the sync and the um, targeted like 10.2.0.3 is also acknowledged this particular one which means the rdp has been enabled this port uh, 3389 has been open in this particular post so that's why it's this particular host mission is been responding so again we can see the attacker has been sending an acknowledgement to get a confirmation and the uh, and the attacker has been trying to authenticate here we can see the attacker is using some username called e, uh, emp01 and it's sending the negotiation request so these are all the requests and res traditional requests and response which happen over and finally i can see the uh, host machine has been trying a uh, sending a uh, like the attacker machine is sending a fin and acknowledgement and the uh, uh, particular uh, activity is get terminated so this pattern observe when they can't successfully get access to this uh, host machine via this rdp because uh, the password might be mismatched or the password might not get validated successfully that might be the case so if you scroll down you can see again the same pattern the uh, again the attacker is sending a sync and the host machine is uh, responding with the sync hack and you can see it is also sending another negotiation request so the pattern continue if you are even scroll downing a bit you can simultaneously observing the same pattern so these 
so these are all the pattern which has been observed when uh, when the attacker has been performing a denial of service or uh, or a brute force technique to get a, a access over the host machine so here here i can confirm 95 percent we are experiencing a brute force activity with the targeted host machine so there is another way we can also confirm this particular activity using this query like as i mentioned we are uh, simply searching the uh, major uh, remote connection with this uh, particular uh, port and uh, as i'm uh, i have detailly detailly mentioned how this particular activity look set of block like set of connection will look and so it is also used to like whenever there is an authentication we will be observing a event log in the host machine so we will be cross verifying uh, this particular event log if it is a failed login so i just pasted the snapshot of this particular event log here we will be observing multiple failed login in a very um, in a very short span of time so now we can confirm 98% somebody has been trying to brute force with or trying to perform various uh, password guessing activity in a very short span of time so to determine this particular one so sometimes in many cases we can't get directly get access to the host machine while performing the investigation so let us assume this scenario like a web server has been experiencing a password brute force activity so we can't directly get access to the machine so it has a lot of procedure we need to raise a request to the web server admin and we need to get our um, access and we need to check the rdp so in such case as i mentioned uh, every logs and event which has been integrated with the sim solution or other solution here for our investigation we will be using uh, wazook uh, for our demonstration so this uh, let us perform a simple query like by mentioning the agent ip like agent ip is nothing but the destination which has been observed over our incident and we are determining the log on type 3 log on type 3 like there are multiple log on types and event id so each event id representing each activity for example if it is a 4625 it has been representing the login filed event and if it is a 4624 it is rec uh, representing the uh, successful login event so this three has been representing the network login activity so in the host machine in the uh, host machine either we can log in physically like i can enter my credential to get access to the host machine or i can authenticate via multiple remote services so i can take a ssh so if i'm if a legit user is taking the ssh so the login type is three or um if it is a physical authentication and if the uh, if the user is getting the login type will be get chain so we are uh, just checking the remote logons or the network logon with the failed login with the uh, targeted um, uh, host machine so just i'm just simply copying it and i'm just simply querying it over the um, our sim solution so in our uh, like uh, this particular sim has been connected with multiple host machine so we are precisely searching this uh, particular i particular host which is get reported in our incident so or else like it would be a very huge result it is too hard to correlate and uh, uh, determine the suspicious activity so while we can observe in the past 24 hours like we can set the time frame based on our reported event here i can see multiple uh, fail login event uh, in a very short span of time even you can see it in a very graphical represent like it has been yeah, there is a sudden spike of 18 login fail activity simultaneously so here uh, i can again see this uh, ip which has been associated so that's why it's been very important to correlate on investigate the log which has been accumulated by various security solution so here i can again see the particular ip which has been found on the network scan activity so i can directly so we have uh, successfully investigated and identified this particular ip is trying to uh, get a initial get a uh, uh, get access to the host machine so these are all the failed events so we have uh, investigated and we can proceed updating the findings and we can proceed closing or moving this incident to another so in case of chain we need to investigate every cases and we need to determine we need to move or report this particular event to the incident response team so that's why we are like it is not recommended to close the incident here we can see the remote login detection so we are jumping into our next activity so here here it's mentioned some remote login successful login event has been detected over the particular uh, host so 
this activity observe when the attacker has successfully guessed the password and get a uh, stable connection with the targeted host machine so for that like um, we like as i mentioned we need to understand its working so if it is a successful connection we will be observing 4624 sorry 4624 event with the log on type 3 so it's a network log on event so as a uh, uh, generate like this particular event id will get generated when a successful login has been observed and the log on type 3 so it is a remote like it is a remote login so we will be definitely observing the log on type 3 so again i'm just giving you the reference of the event uh, like event id so here we can see there are multiple failed uh, multiple failed event and after that like we have we have uh, validated the credential validation this 47716 is observed when a, uh, a new account is being get uh, authenticated or a new host machine is authenticated to the um, uh, authenticated to the host it, the 47716 has been observed so it is also recommended to monitor the 4776 and we all also observe the 4624 which means the successful logon so we need to uh, confirm whether the detected IP is been associated with their activity or not. So for that, again, I have placed the uh, snapshot. I can also show you the logs which is associated with the SIM. Here we can see the IP like 172.16.26.6 been involved in the Nmap scan and the brute force. And we are also observing the login activity. So here. So this is the power of investigation. So like while we are deep investigating, we will get to know what are all the activity has been done by the attacker. We can uh, completely pictureize the particular attack in a way, in a hierarchical way. So before jumping into it, let me show the. Yeah, here you can see the, this particular host machine as a um, successful logon so here we can see the ip is which is associated with that and the log on type 3 which means the uh, here we can have a detailed information that this particular account was successful login so to give a very detailed uh, information about this chain attack first the attacker has been scanned one of the host machine and his he or she has been perform a brute force to uh, guess the particular uh, credential of the uh, remote desktop connection and they get a successful logon. So this is the incident which has been changed. So this has been categorized into three different ones. So it is also recommended to correlate and determine it is a chained incident or a single incident by the security uh, by the security analyst. So after that, as I mentioned, this event is definitely going to shift to the incident response team. So we have created a, a very uh, detailed illustrated way not in a theory like while seeing the image you can clearly understand what exactly happens when this particular incident is been reported so these are all the example of incident response plan as i mentioned so incident response team need to be get ready with the with their plans when the security operation report their incident here we can see if there is a rdp investigation or a rdp in, uh, incident so we will be uh, in, we will be correlating the event log and the network packet so we have done the same in our previous in uh, demonstration too. Here we have determined the IP. So from our investigation, we have identified one particular malicious or a malicious IP, which is associated in both a login event, brute force event and scan event. So how this particular incident uh, response team work? After identifying the malicious IP, they will again perform the IP scan or the, um, like they will be again performing the uh, sim sim search or a network search whether this i they will be scan the enterprise with the detected ip whether there is another activity which is been associated by this ip it uh, because like as i mentioned some attacks can be evaded by the evaded from the detection so in such case while performing the scan while performing the search with the particular ip we can get to know whether this ip has been associated with any other attack or it's been targeting any other host machine so they first will be doing their analysis and check for the login activity over the RDP protocol. Uh, and they will be checking is there any suspicious RDP activity which has been um, successfully get executed by the external IP. They will be again searching this particular activity in their SIM. And first they will be uh, like 
uh, what would be the processes? So if an incident has been reported, it, it's been moved to an incident response team. First, uh, contain, eradicate, and recovery the uh, reported host machine. They will be started containing, they will be isolating the uh, reported host machine from their enterprise infrastructure and they will be um, segregating it from the private or the internal network and they will be disabling the account which has been associated with the um, particular service because the attacker can might extract the credential or dump the credential from the compromised host machine so they will be disabling the account and they will be um, following like they will be creating a new account and they will be updating the password so these are all being happening in the containment phase and in the eradication phase they will be blocking the ip in the firewalls and other security solution and they will be also working on disabling some uh, remote desktop services which are not required in, in case of uh, in, in case of operation they will be try resolving this particular issue and they will be in the recovery phase they will be uh, instruct the users or the instructor, the system admin to reset the password which is associated with the server and they will be reconfiguring the system like uh, like uh, hardening this particular configuration to to avoid that avoid such activity so they will be first um, um, performing this particular containment eradication and recovery operation on the on the identified host machine and later they will be started scanning for this uh, Directed IP in their enterprise. Is there any other activity which has been linked with this uh, reported IP? And they will be started checking any RDP connection which has been associated with the external IP. So if luckily they have been founding, they will be again follow this containment eradication and recovery process. So this is a simple example how a security operation team has been involved in analyzing various incident, various chained incident, and the incident response team has been planning for a recovery. So I hope this demonstration will will give uh, gives you a very better visibility how it's been working. So, so uh, let let us quickly introduce our new course. So why I'm just explaining this particular uh, flow. So in our Blue Team fundamental. So we have been recently launched our one of our uh, Blue Team based uh, big uh, starter edition course it's solely focus on this particular approach so we have followed the same approach so where we have been clearly mentioned how the how various security teams like security operation threat intel threat hunting incident response forensic team has been working to working simultaneously for investigation and detecting various uh, various incidents so this particular as this particular blue team fundamental has been designed for a starters where uh, we have gone in a very basic like if the participant if the um audience has been has a very zero knowledge about the blue team we have designed in such a way to uh, understand like how the blue team has been working how it has been incorporated with the it and environment and what are all the various tools and their detail working like we have included more than 10 tools and we have been detailly explained how it's been working so here we have included the complete working of cyber defense and we have uh, included various investigations. We have given multiple demonstration and we have also given the local lab deployment document. So where you can deploy your own lab like with the SIM access and the network monitoring and you can, in, we have five different interesting challenges. So it is not only based on the web and network. So we have included um, couple of web challenges and couple of network challenges and a very interesting forensics challenges where you will be tasked to uh, investigate a compromised host machine using the uh, using various techniques so we have given detailed instruction how it's need to be done and how this local lab setup need to be done and we are also given multiple investigative mind map like a mind map uh, which i explained here like we have included various incident response mind map and investigative technique which has been used and we have also given a search query so where where i have been used if, such query so we have given in a detail way so this particular blue team fundamental is for the beginner so to give a, a demonstration about it so it is being simulated in such a way to replicate the uh, real world uh, enterprise here we can see where, where we have been deployed one of the web server and web server 24 bar 7 and there are multiple attacks which has been reported and your task as a, as a 
user or as a student you need you will be tasked to investigate the particular incident so this is our uh, complete overview of our local lab so here we have included chat like uh, in some challenges like sql injection based investigation cross edge scripting based investigation remote file inclusion where uh, you will need to investigate both uh, host and uh, network traffic and external network communication so if there is a um, so suspicious communication which has been communicating to our to the external network how it need to be initiated we have given a very detailed document about it and a compromised host machine so we, it is a very interesting dfir use case we have been uh, replicated a uh, real case scenario where we will be investigating the uh, memory dump of the compromised host machine to identify the root cause of an attack so these are all the interesting challenges which has been incorporated with the blue team fundamental so as i mentioned it is it is uh, if you are beginners like it doesn't need to be worried like how it's need to be initiated we have prepared a video based content and a pdf a complete walkthrough so you can follow this particular instruction and you can investigate this it so the general outcomes like you can you will have a real uh, world investigative skill you might you will definitely understand how various it team or various security team has been investigating multiple attack so you will get a very clear picture from this fundamental and the certification procedure so certification procedure has been a uh, bit simple because like it's as a it's a starter based one so uh, participant need to enroll on the blue team fundamental and they will be working they will be get a um, premium video materials and a pdf so they can go through like um, they can understand their complete working tools and technology and their various investigative and incident response plan and they are later they can deploy their local lab and with the local lab we have given a quiz based uh, examination so where the user need to uh, locally deploy the lab based on the investigation the user need to get answer the particular quiz and uh, the passing percent of this particular quiz is been 100% why because like we have given multi you can feel free to attempt multiple times there is no restriction even you can try more than 10 times like it is ultimate uh, uh, unlimited one so you can try as much as time you can and you can uh, even cwl verified blue team fundamental certificate so it's a very simple and a very precise certification path for the starters who's trying to enter into the blue team so this uh, as i mentioned like uh, we have been given you with the dedicated local lab we have a very detailed pdf based instruction to deploy the local lab and a video instruction to deploy the local lab where you can investigate more than 5 6 nearly 10 attacks which has been replicated in that particular defensive um, deployment you can investigate as much as you can it will definitely improve your investigative skill as a starter so i hope like uh, you will enjoy this webinar you might gain a um, understanding how this particular blue team fundamental has been created in such a way so feel free to ask like if you have any queries especially on this particular blue team fundamental course or yeah let me you open So if you have any particular queries or doubts how the particular course content is or a structure like uh, you can feel free to ask now like in the question section. Okay. Yeah, like uh, webinars and this recording will be get uh, transfer to the mail personally and it will be get publicly accessible so as i mentioned i will also include the pcap file in this investigative mind map so you can get a better understanding of it so uh, like the deployment and installation has been detailly given like uh, we have prepared a very comprehensive pdf on the video recording so you will get a, a lab access uh, sorry la uh, lab deployment machines so you need to just dum download this particular uh, configured virtual machine and you can get access to the local lab so we have given a very comprehensive and a detailed pdf for this particular one 
so for the uh, particular price of this course uh, let me quickly open and show you let's simply go to our official website so in our certification we have added blueprint fundamental so right now we are also going uh, through our anniversary sale like uh, we have multiple uh, offerings right now like we have even you want a 50 percent off in our all-in-one sale and we have multiple um, uh, package based offering to like uh, uh, picking up the uh, going to be a 50 percent off and you can the cloud uh, path like we have given a 40 percent off on the cloud so there are a lot of uh, offering feel free to explore it so right now you you will get a 20 percent off uh, due to our anniversary sale so the price like as i said like it's for the starter so we are encouraging the uh, starters to get enrolled in this course so the pricing is uh, a bit decent for the beginners so it's it's a 29 dollars so due to our anniversary anniversary sale if you're purchasing it will be at around 23 dollars so make use of this particular anniversary sale to purchase this particular offering. So giveaway will be get announced by our uh, uh, team like soon, like by most probably by the tomorrow. Yeah. So if you have any technical doubts on what is being included in this course or is it a very good choice for a beginner or something, you can feel free to ask me. So like uh, for a beginners like um, we have multiple choice like uh, we can get into a security operation or a thread intel or it is good to like we have uh, uh, created in such a way what need to be uh, like it is a career based uh, uh, approach to like uh, mostly 95% it's been in a technical way like uh, we have included uh, the working of tools and technology and the investigation procedure and incident response plan we have designed in such a way. And it will definitely help your career part like uh, what need to be choose as a beginners like what uh, what are all the team which has been chosen at, at uh, what particular time if you are an experienced person like what would be the team and how the team like if you know the working of this particular team you will get uh, easily gain your skills on the particular domain and you can get easily jump into it so this is the approach we have been followed in creating this particular uh, course I hope I answered a lot of questions. So for this particular course, we have been using uh, ELK for our uh, demonstration. We have been also integrated the was with the ELK to for our investigation of our local lab deployment. You you will get to uh, have a customized query for uh, for the search on multiple uh, attacks yeah so the examination will have a lab part like as i mentioned we have 10 individual quiz question uh, the every question it's it, uh, it can be answered while performing the lab exercise so this Okay. so okay like uh, like as there are a lot of certification like uh, as we know like uh, we been personally customized in such a way for the starters so it's not for not even for the beginners who have a very uh, basic idea about the cyber defense this has been created for the starters 
even if you have a zero knowledge on this particular blue teaming or the cyber defense after this particular blue team fundamental i majorly hope you will get a very clear picture how the cyber defense has been working so so we uh, the cwl will always encourage in the practical approach here uh, we also do the same in our blue team fundamental even if it is even it's a starter we have included a whole lot of content like uh, in the tools and technology and the investigation pro process to get to have a very good understanding of it okay so i hope like uh, i have answered the majority of the question like it also been existed uh, over the given time so yeah like uh, thanks everyone for joining this webinar hope you enjoyed it yeah so the certification on the uva result will be uh, announced uh, within 48 hours soon yeah thank you thanks everyone